Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is Crash Course in Maya UV Unwrap version 2011 series. Section 2 UV Mapping Basics. In this video I'm going to be discussing a few things such as UV mapping. What is it? A few terms and definitions you will need to know while doing UV mapping. Five uh, main rules of UV mapping. Some guidelines on when to break the rules. And the UV checkerboard which is what you see right here. Uh, in addition to the UV checkerboard, I want to talk about the very, very basics of materials, such as the location of the hypershade, which is this window right here, how to create a new material, which is right here, how to apply the new material, which is obviously attached right here, how to import a texture, and how to apply a texture material, which obviously you notice is right here, and how to make the material visible in 3D space, which is obviously visible in 3D. Now before I get started, I would like to make an important note. This tutorial series is based off of the use of polygons and subdivisions. Therefore, if you are using nerve surfaces, I am sorry, but this tutorial series will not work for you, and you will need to find another source of uh, tutorials to make your nerve surfaces unwrappable and workable. With that being said, let's get started. So I'd like to talk about what is UV mapping. Before I talk about that, I'd like to talk about some very terms, such as UV. UVs are an additional component in an object that resides in each vertex of that object. Confused? Don't be. I'll describe it right now. I'll right click, go to vertex. I have this vertex right here, and with my information you'll see that I have one vertex selected. However, if I go to the UV texture editor, which is visible right here, you'll notice that there are two dots selected, and these are the UVs. To confirm this, if you hold right click and go to UVs, and select that same vertex, you'll know I have two vert vertices select uh, one vertex selected, However, I only have the UV selected, which is also confirmed right here. UV mapping. UV mapping is the method of creating and manipulating UVs on this object. So obviously you know where the UVs are. You can just move it around move, uh, and create, get it to how you want, and all that jazz. Seams. Seams are a visible cut in the model where the texture obviously does not match. You may have seen this in some games or some older movies but you'll uh, notice that the seams are very visible and uh, when you actually create and start manipulating the models. So, here's the seam right here. You'll see that the two, which is cut off at the tip, obviously does not match the three. The checkerboard does not fit, and if you were to look from, it from afar, yeah, you can kind of see it works over here, but if you start actually working over here, you'll notice that it is very evident and very obvious that the seam is right here, does not match whatsoever. UV shells. A UV shell is a cluster of UVs that are attached to one another. One object can have multiple UV shells, which is really important as we're going to be working with multiple UV shells later. Um, everything here is attached. To prove it, I will attach the uh, Move UV Shell tool, which I'll describe later, and I will start moving it around. Obviously it's one shell because everything starts moving, all that jazz. So next I'll talk about the five rules of UV mapping. One, minimize distortion. Distortion is the squash and stretch of the UVs compared to the face in 3D. Confused? Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go right here. Everything looks uniform and flush, as you can see. Um, it's very checkery, very even, no parallelograms, very parallel. But when I start actually moving this UV, you'll notice that even though this is parallel, it is actually very skewed, very distorted in terms of parallelograms, very crooked, not very pleasant to look at very difficult to work with, especially if you're going to start to paint, so avoid this at all times as best as possible. Rule number two, minimize border edges. Border edges are the amount of UV edges exposed to the zero one space. I will describe the zero one space in a moment. This edge is a border edge, because when I select this edge, it is out in the open, obviously. This edge right here is not a border edge, because this edge is attached to other UVs, yeah, other, UV, other, other UV faces, excuse me. Rule number three, keep everything in the zero one space. Now I get to describe this. The zero one space is this section right here. Uh, to talk in math terms, if you think of uh, algebra, the x-axis and the y-axis on the grid, this is zero zero on the x, uh, and this is uh, one one. It's the same thing. This is uh, zero zero on the UV, this is one one on the UV. Shorten to zero one space, which is this section right here. Rule number four, control overlapping. 
UV overlap is when UVs overlap one another. Common sense, right? Well, unfortunately, this is actually more common than it seems. That is because there's actually guidelines on when to and when not to have this actually apply. So I'll select this UV and you'll see what happens with overlapping. I want to move this down to this edge. Now, once you look, you'll actually notice that the UVs are actually backwards. See, a 2 goes like a so, but it's backwards, it's uh, inverted. The pro to that is once you start looking at it, you'll see that it's very flush, very uniform. This actually doesn't look like a seam. However, if you have this actually um, shrunken down, you'll actually see that it is just very, uh, the, the, the uniform is very, uh, the overlapping is very obvious, and it just very few times you actually want to look at that. Uh, difficult for me to explain. Okay. Rule number five, maximize the space. Make sure that as much of the zero one space is as used as possible. There is a lot of unused zero one space, but unfortunately with this default unwrap, it's gonna to have to work with that. All right, now I wanna talk about guidelines. I wanna break in the rules. A guideline to break in the rule is when the texture artist has already created the map. So the UVs have to conform to the map, not to the UVs. In a lot of cases, such as my method of, uh, of uh, modeling and unwrapping, I will actually create a draft, not a draft, a, a sketch, a reference, model the object around the reference, create my UVs how I wanted to, export my map, and actually draw the texture around that UV set. However, that's not all that uh, going to be in every case because some artists will actually have and use the reference as a texture map, so you may have to move, utilize, and deform UVs to uh, fit around that map. Guideline number two, when there is a section that will be the same as a different section. What I mean is symmetry. I'll show you an example. I'm going to create, I'm going to make this a home. I'm going to delete this face and we're going to imagine that this cube is a face. I'm going to make the, uh, the fifth point on that edge and I'm going to duplicate on the negative one like a face would and bam. Now it is very uniform, very flush, and when I draw on this side, it's going to be on this side as well. So that's a guideline when to break it. Next, I want to discuss the UV texture editor and the hypershade. Because the texture editor, I'm sorry, the checkerboard is uh, very important when uh, working with unwrapping to make sure that everything is uh, following the five rules as best as possible. All right, first I want to discuss the location of the hypershade. There's a number of ways to go about doing this. One is if you go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and the Hypershade. Bam, there it is. Once you click that, you will get a, an extra window popping up here very shortly, and it looks like this. You can move the window around, yay, but it's a, it's a Hypershade nonetheless. Another way is if you have default UI, there's hyperspa a Hypershade Perspective button right there. Just click on that, coo coo kajoob, and it will, bam, make that into Hypershade Perspective. Now, if you want to override a, a panel, such as uh, I have the outliner here, and I have the 3D view here perspective, just click on panels, panel, and hypershade. Hypershade! There you go. Bam. Hypershade is now open. You can now create, manipulate, and do whatever you need to, to your, excuse me, to your materials. Next, I want to talk about how to create a new material. There are a number of ways of doing this. One, you can right click, hold it down, go to create, materials and you see your material list right here. Now you also notice there's volumetric materials which is also, I'll be showing here shortly, but materials, Lambert, which is the easiest to render, there you go. Now the way of doing it is going over here, doo -doo 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 -doo, clicking on Lambert. Now you have another Lambert connect, uh, selected and created. A third way of doing it is, well obviously create, which is the same thing as holding the right mouse button, materials, Lambert. Another way of doing it is you have your object selected, mouse over it, right click and hold, going down to assign new material. It'll come up with a, a window very similar to this, Lambert, and it'll actually assign and create a Lambert to that object, which moves on to assigning new material and applying it. A few ways of doing this, what if you have the material already created, such as my Lambert 2? You can right click, assign existing material, Lambert 2, and it'll assign that. Another method is once you go to with, with the hypershade, go to your material, click.
click and hold with the middle mouse, drag over your object, and it'll assign it. Another method is select on your object, go to your hypershade, right click and hold, assign material to selection. There are other ways of doing it, but that's some very basics for you. Now I'm going to be discussing how to actually import and apply textures to your material. You want to be working with the work area and the texture tab right here. So I want to make my new material, Lambert 3. I want to assign it to that object. So we're going to import. One way to do it is you want to uh, double click on your Lambert to get it in the attribute editor. Under your color, you're going to go to this little black and white block, click on that. Since we're going to assign a file, a map to it more or less, we're going to click on file. It's going to happen, it's going to create a 2D texture node, which is right here. Then we're going to go to, we're going to click on file. We're going to go to the image name, click on this folder for browse. We are going to go to desktop because that's where my file is located, crash course in Maya, UV. And we're going to go to UV checker, which is right there. And now I have my UV checker as assigned to the TV, uh, TV placement, which is assigned to the file, which is assigned to the material. Another way of doing it is once you have the texture tab open, you can go to the folder, UV checker, left click, left click and drag, and it'll assign the texture there. And to assign it, clear the graph, go to materials, Lambert 4, middle mouse drag into the work area, texture tab. Go to your object, middle mouse drag to the material. This window is going to pop up default ambient color, color, incandescence, transparency, bump, displacement, and other. Defaults, I wouldn't work with defaults due to the sheer fact is defaults may not be what you want, so you might want to actually just click on color. And that will actually, let's say assign library 4, assign that there. Now, where to find a uh, UV checker? They're everywhere. You go to your internet browser such, and go to images.google.com. Click, uh, type in UV checker, and you want to get this nice variety of UV checkers. The only uh, thing about UV checker is you need something that's grid like, as you can see here, and something that you can tell if it's actually right side up, upside down, inverted, or inverted scale. Such as this one has a nice uh, gray to uh, looks like a yellow greenish color, um, has a grid just like every other one, uh, one through eight. Uh, on various ways, so you can see this one only has 11AA, still has that checkerboard, so you can see if it's deforming or anything of the sort. Whereas this one, uh, where'd you go? There you go, has like a spiral, but still has that grid, and I can't see it very well because it's not popping up, but probably still has either a 1s or A's or something to check inverting. Now, uh, to see it in UV space, by default, you will notice that Maya opens up like a so. You can push on 6 by default, 5 for shaded, 4 for uh, grid, or you can go up here if you didn't notice, click on this box for uh, toggle between shaded and wireframe, and you can click on this box for texture. Alright, I am over my time limit, so I want to end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Next video is going to be section 3, UV Texture Editor, where I uh, briefly describe the UV Texture Editor window and some tools on how to move and manipulate your text, uh, your UVs. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.